This is Motor Mouth, in case you haven't realised, with those subtle opening titles. Later on, I'll be talking to Simon McCorkindale about his concern for the environment. And we'll be joined by the strongest man in the world who will be performing an amazing feat of uh, strength. Plus, if your hair is looking dowdy and you're fed up with it, we'll be having lots of tips and creative suggestions for how you can jazz it up. Coming up in the next two hours on Motor Mouth, all sorts of things. Have a look at this. There's a new survival series out on video. And this morning, we'll be looking at the Sea Eagle and giving away ten videos. Beautiful. Look at that, yeah. And talking about survival, we've got that old dog himself. He survived all those years, Goofy. We've got Goofy and bags of other cartoons. And another cartoon, of course, is She-Ra in this week's episode called Mika of Bright Moon. Tony Gregory went out with ZZ Sputnik. Find out who came off worse. <laughs> Probably they did. <laughs> sure they did. Right, according to scientists, if we had a nuclear holocaust, the only thing that would survive would be cockroaches and status quo. Oh, I believe it. We've got them today on film. Plus, everyone's favourite bunny rabbit, he goes by the name of Bugs. Yeah, watch your... Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> and we'll be having Rick Astley live in the studio. And our very own Andrea Arnold will be talking to him. I Yay! certainly will. Yay, Andrea. <laughs> And if you're fed up with Ibiza and Spain and Portugal for your holidays, have you ever considered Exeter? Sarah Holland loves it. In fact, she lives there. And later on, we'll be showing Five Stars new video. What do you think, Neil? What do you call it? Let me... Oh, let me something. Let remember. me something. Let me something. Well, we'll work that one out later on. Right then, all that coming up in today's show. Plus, I hope you're standing by your phone and you've got your dialing finger ready because we're going to be giving away loads of goodies over the phone. We're going to have like a, a little dialer comp competition. All you've got to do is answer a simple question, phone us as soon as you can, and the first one phone in with the correct answer gets the goodie. Right, these are the goodies as modelled by the lovely Andrea. Da -da 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 -da. Personal stereo. That's coming up. What else have we got in there? Uh, there's lots of hair products in here. Oh, All sorts of things. Your makeup bag. <laughs> Thank you. What else we got? Top ten singles. Top ten singles, yeah, we'll be giving them away later on. Sort of Liberace phone. Oh, yeah, it plays this one as well. Very nice, very nice. Neighbours game. Neighbours <laughs> game. All sorts of things, jeans and T-shirts. Hold on, hold on, Neighbours game. Have we got a cardboard pile in this or what? Let's have a look. Can we get that open? What's in it? A Neighbours game. Anything in there? Anything of interest in there? No cardboard Carly's. No cardboard Carly's at all. I thought there might be a little cut out of, of Carly. That's what we do with the real thing. Oh, and we've got a T-shirt there and some 501s. Right then. The first dialer comp competition. First of all, I'll give you the question. Now, uh, let's see, questioner. Uh, what three cartoons are we going to be showing on Motormouth this morning? Right? You should know that by now because we said it earlier on. First one on the phone that phones in to this number. 0622 600 treble o. That's 0622 600 treble o. If you think you know, the personal stereo is yours. If you're first in, of course. And this morning, we're joined by the very distinguished actor, Simon McCorkindale. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning We've got something up, coming up that I think you might like. Uh, did you see any of the Survival series? I most certainly did. They're some of the best things that we've produced in documentaries, I must say. Good. Animal documentaries, anyway. <laughs> what about stuff. you, Neil? Did you yeah, see Yeah, good stuff on it. Beautiful photography oh, and all fabulous. that. fabulous. Absolutely. Well, I think you're going to be pleased, and I think you're going to be pleased, because ten of Anglia's brilliant Survival series are now available on video. Uh -huh. So have a look at this. It's where a sea eagle goes fishing, and it'll give you a taste for your appetite. The white-bellied sea eagle sometimes belies its name. It's true that it's found mainly around the sea coasts of India, Sri Lanka and China and even as far south as Australia and Tasmania. But it also hunts and nests inland, especially where fish are exceptionally plentiful. Its talons are fine-pointed and curved. Though not actually barbed, they're superb fish hooks. The beak is ideally shaped for penetrating the scales of fish or of sea snakes one of its main foods along tropical coasts. This armament makes it an ideal instrument for low-level attack. 
What do you think? Amazing. Quite amazing. Really. Beautiful. Just beautifully beautiful. shot. It's incredible yeah. the way they get really close up, isn't it? No, they take, it, they take, they take they must, forever to Yeah, they must take for ages. Right, so. Neil, you're a bird watcher. He's a bird watcher, Simon. I must tell you this. Yeah, yeah. now, they all take the mickey, but I'm not into sort of, uh, you know, like vickers watch birds on the on the lawn, the robins and all that oh, sort of... Oh, the robins? Is yeah, that it's, not that, <laughs> it's not that sort of stuff. I, I like to get in a Land Rover and go up into the mountains mm -hmm. and see the birds up there, you know, and all that sort of stuff. You haven't got a Land Rover. No, there's no mountains around here either, but you know what I mean, you can go on holiday, use your imagination. But yeah, the, the seagull that they had there in the, in the clip, we've actually got some white-tailed seagulls in this country. In Scotland, they reintroduced them in 1976. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. and Great there's about stuff. 30 to 50 there mm -hmm. at the moment, so it's a bit of a success You're story. You're more of information, Neil. Yeah. Over the next 10 weeks, we're going to be showing clips from the whole series, and we're going to be giving away 10 videos. 10 videos a week, that's 100 videos in all. And all you have to do to win one of those videos is answer a question. So have a look at this next clip. It's another clip of the sea eagle, and I'm going to ask you a question at the end of it. Look carefully. Sometimes this solitary actor makes his entrance. It's always an impressive one. A moment of panic sometimes follows. The white-bellied sea eagle almost certainly didn't have any aggressive intentions. It was simply cruising around looking for a fish big enough to be worth catching. It knew it wouldn't find one amongst that turmoil of cormorants. The cormorants quickly settled down again over another shovel of small fry. The eagle finds the target it was searching for and makes a perfect low-level attack. The fish weighs close on three pounds. It's exceptionally large for the lake. The eagle is unable to gain any height and simply concentrates on reaching dry land with its catch. Now, were you watching? Were you listening? The question is, what are the blackbirds called that the sea eagle disturbs? Oh, that's easy. Oh, yes, Neil, we know you know. If you think you know the answer, put it on a postcard, send it to me, Andrea, survival competition, Motormouth, P.O. Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME 14 5 L. Do you think you know the answer, Simon? I think I know the answer, but I won't say a word. Don't say a word. You know what it is, don't I you? I could give well. you the Latin answer. Actually, if you even want. I know oh. what it is. Surprise. Right, well, that was the first cartoon. Today we're giving away loads of goodies, and I asked you the question, what three cartoons are we going to be showing today on Motormouth? Already we've had loads of phone calls, but I did say the first one to phone in with the correct answer. And on the phone we've got Giles Cookman from Sussex. Giles, are you there? Oh, yes, Giles Cockman, actually. Giles Cockman, sorry about that, mate. <laughs> All right, what's the answer then? What three cartoons are we showing today on MM? Well, you're showing Goofy. Yeah. And there's Bugs Bunny, and yeah. then there's She-Ra. Well That's done. the one, yeah. Personalised stereo on its way to you. Oh, well great. done, mate. Hello, Giles. Hello. What, what sort of music will you be playing on your stereo then? Oh, I don't know, I like Yaz, I think that's she's brilliant. Yeah. Well done, you like Yaz, good choice. Yeah. What about Rick Astley? Do you like Rick Astley? Well, he's all right, but... Yep. No. We, we've well, got him coming, coming up, up later. Oh, Cheers, Giles. Watching. Well done, it's on its way, mate. See you, Giles. Bye. 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 Well, that sure helps with the petrol costs, but then not everyone, of course, has the strongest man in the world to help them. This is he, John Paul Siegmarsson from Iceland. Nice to meet you. Hi. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Now, what's happening with Iceland this year, John Paul? Because, I mean, you've got the strongest man in the world and Miss World. Are you breeding a super race up there? Uh, we are just uh, what we are. We are not trying anything. <laughs> no secret Viking plans for world domination, then? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Now, how did you start out in all this? I mean, when, when did you start getting strong? When I was just five years old, I decided to become very strong. Mm -hmm. So I started training Icelandic wrestling. Mm -hmm. Your stepfather, of course, was the Icelandic wrestling champion, wasn't yes. he? Yes, yes, he was. Yeah. So, so you were actually wrestling with him from the age of five? Yes, with him and also with the other men. 
but uh, we had very few boys doing the wrestling, so I was always training with the, with the grown men. Grown men, yeah, well, that must have made you very, yeah. very, very <laughs> strong. And since then, you've done all kinds of sports, football. I've done almost everything, mm -hmm. even darts. Right, but well, in a minute, we're going to see, like, your biggest thing, of course, is just being strong. We're about to see a clip where you enter the strongest man ever competition. And here you are, what are you doing here? I'm lifting, it is a heavy deadlift, it is over half a ton, a world record. What does a deadlift mean? You have to lift a heavy thing from the ground mm -hmm. and straight out your back and legs. Right, fine. Now, I mean, how do you get this strong? I think food and training, aren't they, the two? Yes, I, uh, I live a very healthy life. I don't, I don't smoke and Let's I don't drink. Some... This is a typical food basket, amazingly, for one day when you're training. Oh, yes. It? Now, it's incredibly healthy. I mean, there's like... Bananas, Bananas, fish, fish, eggs. What are you getting to there? Milk with vitamins. Mm -hmm. No fats. Low fat. And this, of course, you're, it's called skier. And it's skier. an Icelandic yes, product, isn't it? This is an uh, Icelandic product, but uh, this is made in Scotland. It's got you on my, the top. Yeah. You can actually buy this in Scottish supermarkets. So oh, if yes. you want to become as strong as this, you can just go to Scotland and do it. <laughs> Plenty right, of good eggs. Stuff. Yep. And also fish. Plenty so there's no fish. red meat or anything sort of too. Uh, I try to stay away from fat and sugar, yeah. but I also eat meat, but uh, I cut the fat you away. You eat lots of carbohydrates, don't you, for your training period? Yes. And then uh, protein afterwards? Yes. Together. Correct. <laughs> you must be training. <laughs> You're getting in on this <laughs> Away with the food, I think, there. Yep. <clears throat> right, now, tell us a little bit about why you wanted to be strong. I mean, what makes somebody want to be the strongest man in the world? Uh, in Iceland, we have a lot of... Uh, Sagas, Icelandic sagas. Stories, stories, stories. Yes, about yeah. Vikings, strong Vikings. <laughs> so I just wanted to become lo like one of the Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. And you certainly <laughs> managed it. Look at this. And have you always had to eat that much? I mean, wasn't it, didn't you get tired of eating? Uh, sometimes, but uh, I eat small amounts of food every three hours. What about during the night? I mean, do you eat during the night as well? If I have nothing else to do, yeah. <laughs> I do some eating. And when you were young, did you always eat that much? I ate more when I was a young, young uh, kid. And when I started to train, for example, uh, my, pa my, my father put a cow in the fridge. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I had not ate the cow in between meals in three months. Oh, Even yeah. with my tail left. <laughs> that is really distasteful. <laughs> Sorry. Right, you're going to perform an amazing feat for us now. You're going to turn this car on its side. Yep. Now, I have to ask you at this stage, do you want any help from me? Because uh, I am quite strong. We have to wait and see. I'd like to feel this. <laughs> I, go, I go, wait, good are muscles. you impressed? No, not oh, yes, very, it's obviously. Good. Oh, can I have a bit of encouragement from the audience for Jean Paul? Like, go for it in a big way, Jean Paul, that kind of thing. I need your help now. Yeah, come on, lots yeah. of cheering, lots of noise. Boom! <laughs> Come on, keep the noise up. Very impressive, but uh, Caroline lifts an articulated lorry every morning before breakfast. Right, today we're giving away loads of goodies on Motormouth. I've got the top ten singles here to give away. We've already given away a personalised stereo. All you've got to do is answer a very simple question. Where did John the Strongman come from? If you think you know, dial us on 0622 600 000 and the top ten singles could be yours. First one in. Coming Motormouth 2, more of this groovy lot will be showing their new video, plus Rick Astley's popping in for a chat, and of course there's always She-Ra, stick with us. Mini chef toys from Fisher Price. No wonder we are left on the shelf. Look, fry ups, oh. soup. Oh. They even enjoy the washing up. 
Oh, just look at that lovely spread. It's all right for some. No! Oh, oh yummy. I could eat a horse. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. The new Mini Chef collection from Fisher Price. We're coming in now. I can see the satellite station. Over. We have lift off. You have satellite station your space. Roger. Roger. Pass defense unit. Aircraft carry you have clearance for takeoff. Over. Pilot to helicopter. I have enemy on radar. I'm returning to camp. All right, let's move fast. Conceal all stations. Close down units. Heliport station to searchlight. Over. Pass station now. Compass. Over. We can rest, men. Aircraft carry to water carrier. Exercise over. Ready. Secret Army supplies present two action worlds concealed in one. It's Castle Lovely Locks. Castle Lovely Locks with over 29 playthings and seven pixie tails. Manta Force, searching the universe for Earth's twin planet, an entire space battle force in one gigantic ship. Manta Force from Bluebird. Inside every special box of Weetabix is a free ET video sticker. Eight different scenes to collect that capture all the magic of the blockbusting movie. Well, nearly all the magic. This is Flick. This is Flick. They are the hands of the new Swiss watch. With children in mind, they teach the time. Is water resistant, flick flack, is shock resistant, flick flack, flick flack, flick flack, is Swiss made. Tower Records brings you Cool and the Gang, the singles collection. All their greatest hits on one album. From dance smashes like Get Down On It, Celebration and Ladies Night, to the classic love songs of Joanna and Cherish. Cool and the Gang, the singles collection. Out now at Tower Records, Piccadilly Circuits and Kensington High Street. Starcom, in deep space, the Starmax bomber and Captain Rip Malone are under fire from the evil Shadow Force. The Starmax attacks enemy positions before returning to Starbase to refuel and rearm, using magna power and energy so advanced it works without batteries. The Starmax bomber, part of the massive Starcom battle fleet. Play School's Busy Elephant is a soft, cuddly activity center. You can discover who's in the mirror or call a friend. And there's lots of funny noises too. A mouse that squeaks and ears that crinkle and rattle. Busy Elephant will keep baby busy for hours. Sharing in the magic of the Play School is... The astonishing Tomatronic 3D Games. 3D Thundering Turbos. Only the most courageous driver can win. And 3D Sky Attack. Invading UFOs threaten to destroy a planet. They must be stopped. Tomatronic 3D games. Packed with 3D action. Only from Tomy. I think you do. Look, we're having a bit of an argument here. I think Neil looks a little bit like Rick Astley. I mean, Rick Astley's a lot more handsome than Neil, but there's ah, a similar kind of look. look. Judge for yourself. Rick Astley's coming into the studio later on. Plus, I'll be giving away loads of stuff on the phone. First, you are. Princess of power. Mm -hmm. Hello, this is Motormail. Welcome back. A little while ago, Neil <clears throat> set up a competition for you to win this week's top ten singles. The question was, what country does the strongest man in the world come from? He was one who was pushing over the car just a few <laughs> minutes ago. The answer, of course, was Iceland. Now, who was the winner, Neil? Yeah, the winner, the first one to phone in was Angela Deviana from London. Well done, Angela. You'll be getting the top ten singles. Here they are. Right then, still to come in today's programme, I'll be giving away loads of stuff over the phone, so I'll have your dialing finger ready, and there'll be this sort of stuff. Yep, there'll be Zig Zig Sputnik with our presenter Tony Gregory interviewing them in the back of a limo. And we'll be showing Status Quo's new video, Burning Bridges. Those old groovers. Yeah. <laughs> bit of quo, bit of quo there. <laughs> oh, yeah, also coming up, we've got Bugs Bunny, loads of cartoons today. More chance for me to do my Bugs Bunny impersonation. What's up, da? What do you think? Plus, don't forget Rick Astley live in the studio a little later in Motormouth talking to Andrea Arnold. Yes, thank you. 
Sarah Holland wrote to us and said, why don't you make a film about our town? So we did. She lives in Exeter. Yeah, that's coming up at 11.15. A little after that, we got five star on video. A lot of people wonder who's the best dancers in the business. Some say Michael Jackson. I reckon it could be five star, you know? I think she needs something doing to her hair, though. Did you see that hair star? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I can spend hours in the mirror looking at my hair and playing around. And there's masses of things you can do with it without having anything major, like a cut or a perm or a colouring, for which, of course, you should go to the hairdresser. Now, to show you just how much fun you can have with your hair without having anything major done, we've got hairdresser Ian Mislin here with us. Hi, Ian. Hi there, Colin. Now, you, of course, do photographic modelling shoots loads of times, don't you, where you have to turn up and you don't know what's going to happen. That's right. It's sort of every day is totally different, exciting creating sort of glamorous looks, uh, avant-garde looks. You can call on fun to do anything. Right, so you just get a theme for the day theme. and you've got to go in there and just and create it. produce and work miracles. Right, show just how good you are at doing that. We're going to choose four people from our audience here and we're going to just completely revamp them. Go ahead and choose okay. in. Okay, come and have a seat. <laughs> Number two here. Very lovely hair you already, this one. Seat. Oh, yep, and a stunning redhead. Johnny and Sweet. Who's going to be our number four? And you, come this way. Right, a cross section, all girls, I notice. Actually, Why no, did you choose, choose these, these four, just Ian? Just Can you tell us well, a bit about them? Um, I think it's important to actually demonstrate today the versatility of hair by mm -hmm. picking contrast in lengths, looks, different textures, so that we can really demonstrate just really how versatile hair is, what you can actually do with hair. Um, by just taking the time and the care and, and using the, the basic... the fun and the imagination, of course. Yeah, and basic equipment to produce really good looks. Absolutely. So everything you're going to do today, you can also do for yourself at home. We're just hoping to give you a bit of sort of imagination, imagination. really. Imagination. Yeah. So we've got him, we've got short hair, we've got dark permed hair, blonde hair. This has been crimped a little bit, hasn't it? That's just been sort of a little bit crimped, yes. Yep. And a and very natural red hair. I can tell you natural because of the freckles. <laughs> right, well, a little bit later, we're going to be coming back to see just how many different things Ian can do with his hair. We look forward to seeing you all later. And of course, there are some people left in the world with uh, natural hair. Right then, I've been giving things away all morning on the telephone. I've got this to give away. It's like a piano phone, or a phone piano, whichever way you want to look at it. There you go. All you have to do to win this piano phone is ring us on this number, 0622 600 and answer this simple question. Which Motormouth presenters haven't you seen yet this morning? Simple question, there's a clue coming up in this film. By the way, don't adjust your set. Now, I've interviewed some stars in my time, Kylie, Brother Beyond, but today could well be the height of my career. A group who've never needed to ask, when will they be famous? But a group who, well, whose own missile of success will carry them well and truly into the 21st century. And a group who, in their own words, invented the future. Of course, Zig Zig Sputnik. Success. When we first started working with Stock Aitken and Waterman, everybody really hated them. And everybody really hated us as well, so we thought, Two wrongs might make a right, but it has. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't this a slight dilemma for sort of the music industry rebels who go around taking the mick and, and you know, go and work with Stock Aitken and Waterman? I think it's more dangerous to work with them. I think it's that people, you know, it's so easy to slag off Stock Aitken and Waterman and say how useless they are. These are smart guys. These have had a load of success. You know, they are the Tamla Motown of 1988. Well, you just be quiet now. <laughs> Zip. And we got up just to rise. I'm telling you the story about the video. <laughs> so we wanted to write a song where we could go to Marbella or Don't something else in Spain. Don't park under the pylons. I don't want to get anything. To film the video on the yeah. yacht. That was the that whole was idea. If we made a record with success, we could What would we, what so we all like at school then? Do you want to just stop interrupting us, Chris? <laughs> Tony, just be <laughs> quiet. Who's, who's the interview? Sorry. What were you like at school? This is what we want to know. I was like the same but smaller. <laughs> right. And younger. <laughs> just as talkative. <laughs> yeah. No, not really. I was quite quiet. I used to sit in the front row. I was the real swat, really. Chris, on the other hand, <coughs> did you go to school, Chris? Sometimes, occasionally. So what was 
the worst thing you did at school then? Starting. I never should never have joined in the first place. You just don't know, do you? You're four years old, someone says, do you want to go to school? And you go, yeah, okay, why not? Everybody else is going. It's a big mistake. Well, tell me about success then. Success is the best brilliant. Thing about it? The best thing about success. Success, it's not having to get up in the morning. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's going to Marbella on Odyssey. It Aussie. doesn't necessarily buy you happiness, but it means you can park your yacht real close. Six, five, six. Terribly famous people who are desperate for a bit of publicity that keep cropping up. They weren't you? desperate for a bit. We had to, we had to talk them into it. Um, we sure. just yeah, thought yeah, it would be good fun. Guys. Everybody in the music business has experienced like terrible press and people making up stories about you. I mean, this is the serious bit, boys. And I just, I'll just do this bit on my own if you don't mind. Um, you never was near. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's had problems with terrible stories in the press about them and everything, and felt that kind of press backlash. Or our brick has had some awful things said about it. Oh, and I true. thought it was just, oh, no, I just thought it'd be really nice if, if everyone kind of supported us and said, you know, we'll be, yeah, we'll be at the Sputney video. We went around and just asked everybody we knew and went around at parties and said, do you want to be in our video? And everybody said, yeah. 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 Right, hang on a minute, no, cut the interview with the driver, quick, let's get going. I want to get on before the adverts start. This is so easy, isn't it? What a clue that was, eh? I said, uh, anyone want to win this? And they had to name the two presenters from Motormouth that haven't been on today's show yet. Right, well, that was one of them in the film. And uh, we've got Victoria on the phone here. Hello. Victoria, are you there? Right, Victoria, doesn't seem as if Victoria is there. So what I'll do is um, I'll send this out to her anyway. It's a little telephone with a bit of piano on there. Well done. Stand by because I'll be giving away loads of goodies on the phone. Great. Last week, we read out a letter from Kay Turner who said she was angry about humans' attitude towards animals, especially the cruelty involved with using animals for testing things like makeup. Well, since then, this issue has received a lot of publicity. And the good news is, uh, companies like Tesco's, Sainsbury's, and Woolworths are going to introduce cruelty free products. If you're out shopping and you want to make sure the stuff you're buying is cruelty free, what you can do is check the packaging, or if you're in doubt, ask at the counter. Right, another angry letter we've had in this week is from Max Owen of Southampton. And he hits out at food products that say they're preservative and additive free, but in fact, if you look down the list, have lots of nasty ingredients. He hits out particularly at Ribena that says preservative additive free, and down the side it says it has sugar and glucose syrup in it. We are talking angry here. <laughs> Listen we are to indeed, this. Yeah. Listen to this, right? Dear Motormouth, I got a sister called Lisa. When she gets on my nerves, I beat her up. Oh, Ooh, nice. <laughs> I got a cat called Peachy. Right, that came in on Wednesday. On Thursday, we had another letter. It says, Dear Motormouth, I have got a brother called Martin. Always when I sit down and watch your programme, my, my brother comes along and starts talking. And when I tell him to shut up, my brother just starts beating me up. Oh, <laughs> Can you please you tell are. my brother on Saturday to leave me in peace? I've Shout got a Martin. cat called Peachy. Oh! It's the, is it the same family? <laughs> yeah, the brother and sister. So, right, Martin, pack it in, mate. Yeah. When she's watching Matt Motormouth, pack it in. What say you do all the time is doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, say hello to Peachy. So, listen, if you've got a brother or sister that gets on your nerves, or just generally you want a Motormouth mouth off, contact us at the usual address, which is Motormouth PO Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME 14 5 L. There is, of course, another way that you can get your name or face in Motormouth in the frame. There's Donna Musgrove, right in the middle of a field. And 
this is Yolanda Theophile. What a name. Shirley Theophile, another great name. <laughs> and happy birthday on Monday to Kelly McDonald. Now, these two didn't tell us their names, but there's the George Hotel in the back. And this is Rufus and Tiffin. They write to say they watch every week. Ah, the earliest known photo of Banana Run, I think. <laughs> Plus the junior Mr and Mrs Universe contestants <laughs> down at the pool. With me now, as promised, is the distinguished actor... I keep calling you that, don't I? <laughs> distinguished, you like that, don't you? <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Simon McCorkindale. <laughs> Now, you may recognise Simon from things like Jaws 3, Falcon Crest, and we've got a clip coming up here of you in Death on the Nile. Oh, good heavens. Well, some... When I was a young man. When you were young. <laughs> How long ago was it then? <laughs> it's about 12 years ago, I suspect. Oh, well, it's coming up in a minute, so let's have a look. Uh -huh. There you go. Well, I don't know where you are amongst all that. Well, I'm the sort of the camel over there on the left. <laughs> <laughs> That's me with a funny hat. It, oh, there you are. There I can are. see you yeah. there, yeah. It's a lovely hat. Nice clothes. I can assure you, those things, camels, most unpleasant things to ride. Yes, ever. I know. I've I've met camels. Yeah. Who's that hitting the hitting the camel? That's Maggie Smith. Th that and one that's there. Betty Davis there, who actually didn't want to ride the camel or even a donkey. Did you have a lot of fun? And somewhere this in there we've got oh, wonderful. And somewhere in there we've got George Kennedy riding on a camel uh, on a donkey, and he is so heavy that the poor thing just literally didn't function again for the rest of the oh, week. Oh dear. <laughs> George is enormous. Now, you, you were living in Hollywood, weren't you? I was indeed. But you've moved to England. Why, why have you moved back? Well, basically, the quality of life is much better here. And, I mean, the, the work ethic and, 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 the, and the way that they go about life, particularly in Los Angeles, uh, is very disappointing. And it's, it's not what, you know, the European is used to. And, frankly, we wanted to come home. Great. Well, welcome back. And that's back. where we are. We're back. <laughs> now, I must say that Simon uh, saw our piece on Wales a couple of weeks ago, and he rang up and he said, could he come and talk to us about his project? So, what is your project? Well, the project, actually, is a, it's a piece of music called Tarka. Tarka is inspired by the children's story, Tarka the Otter, by Henry Williamson. And how does that story go? Well, it's the, it's the story of a little otter living, who li lives in, uh, in, the, in the, the waters around Devon, mm -hmm. and it's, it's really the persecution of this otter, and it, and it unfortunately has a very tragic end. Mm -hmm. But the, the bottom line of the story, like so many wonderful children's stories, is really the more of the philosophy about life generally that Henry yeah. Williamson was writing about. Now, we've had a piece of music that uh, we've been involved in. It's written by Harry Williamson, who is Henry's son, and Anthony Phillips from the rock group Genesis. Uh -huh. And they've written this fabulous piece of instrumental music, which is now out on an album and indeed has a single attached to it as well. And what they've really done is they've captured the spirit of Henry's book, rather more than the top-line story of Tarka the Otter, which many of your viewers probably are aware of. Yeah. It's actually really more the philosophy of this whole book that's so wonderful, which is really talking about how man must learn to live with himself and how man must learn to live with nature, which, you know, as we all know now, is becoming very much a prevalent issue in our lives. So when is it actually coming out, the single? The single is out now. It's in the record shops and the, and the album's been out for almost a month. And you've got a video to go with it as well, And we've well, got a video you? to go with it, yeah. And uh, we've got the video somewhere, so we're going to see it. It's the first time I'm going to be seeing it. Uh-huh. Well, uh -huh. I think you'll enjoy it.
must have been quite emotional. Well, it was an emotional issue. I mean, yeah. these, these, these whales got stuck under the Arctic Circle and, uh, and, and the Russians and the Americans and, in, in fact, the whole world got together and, and, and saved them, which is just wonderful. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. But why, the oh, obvious question is, that your music was inspired by Tarka the Otter, mm -hmm. but you used the whales for well, the video. Uh, yeah, as I was saying just before, really, what, what the music is inspired by Tarka the Otter, but the, it was the underlying core of the book, the philosophy behind it, you know, all about really more birth, life, death, the evolution of the planet, man being kind to himself, being kind to animals, you know, learning to live with nature. And that's really what the spirit of, uh, of Henry's book was about. And that's what he was really promoting. And that's the spirit of the And that is the, exactly what that whales. is, you know. Instead of going out harpooning them, we should be going out and saving them, moving Ooh, them into safe so water. Right. Oh, yes. Doing it, you know. I mean, it's, everybody should be out there. Yeah. Do you think people are becoming more aware? Oh, of... well, most, most definitely. Most definitely. I mean, we, we know we are, we are getting into the right area, but it's still an awful long way to go. An awful long way to go. Well, there's the Mrs. Thatcher's called the Ozone. Uh, indeed, and I mean this, this big, this big meeting coming up, which is terrific, and and you know there's more and more around. And indeed, I think the greatest thing is that young people, kids, I mean your viewers particularly, are becoming very aware because they're losing out. They're the ones who won't have it in 10 or 15 years if we do it. The Thank you very much. My I'm pleasure. glad you're it's doing great. this sort of stuff. Good That's, luck with it. It's terrific. Thanks. I've been giving loads of things away all morning. Victoria guessed correctly on the last one. Julian and Tony hadn't been on the show so far. Even though she didn't come through on the phone, she came through on the director's private phone. He's so flash. <laughs> right then, that's on its way to you, Victoria, the phone. The next thing I'm going to give away is the booby prize. Caroline? Oh, you should be so lucky. <clears throat> In fact, what we're really giving away is this brand new game called The Neighbours Game, based on our dear Australian cousins, Kylie Minogue and Gang. And the question you have to answer to win it is what street does Neighbours take place on? You know, like Coronation Street takes place on Coronation Street and Brookside takes place in Brookside yeah, Close. Yeah, it's not Neighbours kind of Lane thing. or anything like that. No. Phone is on 0622 The <coughs> first one through, the correct answer, gets the game. But now we've got a video of Status Quo coming up for you. Neil's fave. <laughs> Yeah, all right, I'll admit it, I like status quo. I also like Rick Astley, five star. They're coming up in the next part of Motormouth together with Famous for 30 Seconds. I'll be giving away loads of goodies. It's Castle Lovely Locks. Castle Lovely Locks with over 29 playthings and seven pixie tails. Manta Force, now they face a new threat. Red Venom, the Viper Squad's own attack ship. Nine enemy fighting machines in one. The Hoverfly, Battle Pods, the Trojan Trooper, and Hydro Sleds. Major Vex's mission, to stop Commander Quest and his Manta Force from finding Earth's twin planet. Red Venom, nine enemy fighting machines in one attack ship from Bluebird. Records brings you Cool and the Gang, the singles collection. All their greatest hits on one album. 
From dance smashes like Get Down On It, Celebration and Ladies Night to the classic love songs of Joanna and Cherish. Cool and the Gang, the singles collection, out now at Tower Records, Piccadilly Circuits and Kensington High Street. So, two years at infant school and she thinks she can tell us how to run things. Well, we won't have it. She's coming in on the red eye. She won't have had time to use her office desk. Or her slow sticky tape. Or that teddy clipboard. Or use her typewriter. She'll be like a jelly baby to the slaughter. Pleasant trip. Yes, thank you. I made the break. If it ain't chocolate break, then you ain't made that break, so make the break. Presenting Disney's one and only Pinocchio and a classic collection of timeless videos. The best gifts you'll ever give. And that's the truth. Play School's Busy Elephant is a soft, cuddly activity centre. You can discover who's in the mirror or call a friend. And there's lots of funny noises too. A mouse that squeaks and ears that crinkle and rattle. Busy Elephant will keep baby busy for hours. Sharing in the magic of the Play School. For two hundred and ninety-nine pounds. Check it out. Check it out. Yes, this is Famous for 30 Seconds. This is a part of the show where we take someone out of the street and bring them here and make them famous only for 30 seconds, though. This week's entrant was a competition winner in a national newspaper. I can't tell you which newspaper that was, but it always tells the truth. And now, I'm going to bring you the great Lindsay Jones, but first of all, let's see what Lindsay Jones has been doing in this week's press. Have a look at this. In this week's Mighty Mouthful, we find fascinating facts about this girl, Lindsay Jones. How much money was she offered to reveal the number of the left luggage locker where Kylie Minogue keeps her personality? The fan letters that ask her for advice on fame and fortune and where to buy ready-built garden sheds in the Croydon area. And does she think that toy boys should carry their birth certificates? Yes, it's all moronically magnificent in the mouth. And this is Lindsay Jones. Hello, Lindsay. Hi. How are you? Alright. Oh, Alright. Where are you from, Lindsay? Liverpool. Lindsay's from Liverpool. What is it like being famous for 30 seconds? It's boss. It's boss, and that's a Liverpool phrase. And you want to say hello to someone, don't you? Yeah, everyone to our school. Chesterfield, hi, I'm your nan. Oh, and your nan. Don't forget that one. <laughs> As always, Lindsay, we've got some dark sunglasses for you, so I'll put those on you, so people won't recognise you there. And we've got a T-shirt which said, I was famous for 30 seconds. And I'm sure your nan's watching that one. And we've got a pen so you can give autographs. But we also know it's a very special week this week, because last week was your birthday and we've got you a birthday surprise unknown oh, to you no. where's our birthday surprise birthday oh, oh no she says she doesn't quite know what's happening and there's your birthday surprise and we want you to open your birthday surprise so go on go on give it a good rip give it a good rip in it goes rip it out happy birthday surprise <laughs> Now this is your auntie, isn't it? Yeah. And your auntie, what's she called? Nicola. Nicola, and it's happy birthday from Nicola. And who's this man here? Well, we have yet another surprise. Oh, now, no. tell me, Lindsay, what are you up to this afternoon? You're hoping to do a bit of shopping, aren't you? Yeah. Right, well, we're going to save you the trouble if you just like to hold that. I you. certainly will. We have a little surprise because last night, Lindsay said how much she liked my belt. So, here we are. I can't believe it. Thank Generosity. Here we go. There we go. Generosity feelings only Sorry. fault. So, Lindsay, famous for 30 seconds. This week at Spin Off, Lucinda's gone skiing in the Alps and Chesco's finding it uphill work getting Jimmy his job back. Can Jimmy prove his innocence or is he on the slippery slope to social security? And can Hillary play happy families or will his son Jason push him over the precipice?
Now, come along, Jason. No dragging your feet. This will be much more fun than sitting in front of the goggle box all day. Mm, I didn't think there were such things as Mexican measles, Sharon. Oh, I see. You think you caught them from a dodgy plate of guacamole? Yeah. Well, no, no, it might just be medically possible. Now, come along, Jason. So many things to show you. I can hardly wait. Look, yeah, Mr. Rolls you. has just arrived. You better have a word with him. Mr. Rolls, it's your secretary, Sharon. She won't be in today. Not feeling 100%. Ah, oh, poor girl. Hillary, it's ridiculous. She's just skiving. You better have a word with her yourself. Hello, Sharon, Sharon, Sharon. She's hung up. Honestly, that girl appears about as often as Madonna down the local chippy. She has a delicate constitution. We <laughs> must make allowances. Now, I don't think you've met my son and heir, Jason. Jason, this is Mr. Fortune. E-I-E-I. -E oh. <laughs> yes, I'm pleased to meet you. Listen, Hillary, about Sharon. I brought Jason in to give him a whiff of the hurly-burly world of management, give him a taste for the cut and thrust we experience every day. That'll be nice. Don't know if I can take the excitement. I thought Jason could cover Jimmy's duties, as unfortunately I had to sack our bellhop. Yes, about Soon Jimmy. have a regular Rolls dynasty here at Spin-Off, eh, Jason? Terrific. First day in the hotel business, great day in anyone's life. Difficult to know where to start. I know. Let's start with something really exciting. I'll show you how we compile the stock returns in the shop. Now, Lucinda's away skiing this week, so we won't be disturbed. <laughs> and to think, I nearly stayed at home and got bored. Uh, coming, Peter. <laughs> Sorry. Bennett, Chesco, you mutton or what? Jimmy, what are you doing here? I believe the word is skulk. You must be out of your mind. If Hillary sees you, you'll be right in it. Oh, funny. I thought I already was. You didn't take that hundred pounds, did you? Well, how many more times? I'm a rising star of the business world. Why should I bother with half-inching the petty cash? The fruit machine. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. I was a bit out of order. Why are you here? I've come to clear my name, prove my innocence. What do you think you can do about it? Leave it to me. I'll fix it for you. Uh, Chesco, old mate, I wouldn't trust you to fix a plastic model kit. I know what I'm up to. What? I need some time in his office. Cover for me. No, Jimmy, Jimmy. Uh, I don't think this is a very good idea. I think you're a diamond, Chesco. No, Jimmy, Jimmy, get out of there! Finally, you add the first figure to the overall costing and arrive at the final stock costing total. Amazing. And that's just part of the manager's job. I also have to arrange staffing rosters, oversee studio allocation, uh, check restaurant booking. Oh, it's all go, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, you learn to cope with the pressure, Jason. In, in fact, you grow to love it. It's like a drug, I suppose. Well, so you could call yourself a cost accounting junkie. Uh, well, in a way, son, yes. So you reckon that I'd like a career in hotel management? Well, it's a good life for a young man. Thrills, spills and fast living. Here, if I did take it out... Yes? Would I get to wear a silly wig like yours? Now, less of your lip. It's all about creating an image. I wear this because it gives me an aura of youthful dynamism. I don't think Mum would like it if she knew you were wearing it. It's like a dead gerbil's fell in your head. She'll turn up here one day and then you'll be in for it. Now, that's enough of that. If you're not going to take this seriously... No, sorry, Dad. I do want to take this seriously. Really. Well, let's go to the office. The computer at least should interest you. Jimmy! Hurry up! Here you'll be... <laughs> Something uh, up, Chester? Something up. Uh, there is something up. Yes, something's definitely up. Well, we'd better discuss it in my office. No, I mean, well. <laughs> You're all right, Chester. You seem to be sweating rather a lot. Uh, Dad, I'm just going to pop off to the uh, what's it. Yes, you uh, you do that, son. No, yeah. uh, look, did I show you my holiday snaps? Look, that's me on the poop deck after the fancy dress ball. That's uh, Bugs Bunny behind me. He was in the cabin next door. He travels in ladies' underwear. Bugs Bunny wears ladies' underwear? No, Hiram Farkleberger, the man in the costume. When I say he travels in ladies' underwear, I don't mean he travels about wearing it, of course. No, uh, he sells it. Chesco, what is all this about? Oh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Just think it's time I got out of here. I think you may be right. Things are obviously getting on top of you. I'm okay. I just need to sit down. I felt a little strange. A little strange. You ought to take it easy. Now I'm, I'm going to my office. You send in Jason when he gets back from the. Uh... What's it? Yes. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I, I didn't think anyone would be... What are you doing in here? Not a lot. This may be a stupid question, but who are you? Jason Rolls. Well, son of Bog? Yeah, him with the dead animal on his bonds. Who are you? Jimmy Lane, the bellhop. ex bellhop from what I hear. My old man's giving me the uh, Spanish fiddle, hasn't he? Spanish fiddle? Elbow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, rotten old rat bag. My thoughts entirely. So why has it got you here, then? Standing in for you. Probation at Spin-Off Detention Centre. Old Tarantula Red reckons I'm less likely to get into trouble if I'm with an easy thumping reach. Fat chance. Mm, you had a spot of bother with the fruities, I hear. Yeah, got a bit carried away. Nick some money off the pink pumpkin head himself. Blew it down the arcades. Bit more luck and I'd have cleaned up. Yeah, it gets you, doesn't it? Yeah. When you see that big winning line right above yours. Mm, that's the killer. Do you want a fag? No, thanks. How long have you been smoking? Oh, I don't know. Ages. Duff habit. You ought to knock it on the head. 
If you can kick the machine, smoking will be easy. Leave it out. Nothing clever about it. So? Mugs game. Pack it in if I were you. Look, I thought you were all right. But you're just as bad as me old man. Just a friendly warning. Yeah, well, you can keep it to yourself. Uh, you're not going to tell him I'm here, are you? Your secret's safe with me, Commander Queen. He's behaving impeccably, Angela. He obviously needed a little responsibility. Bring out the man in him. I promise you, Jason is fine. Yes, I'll call you back later. All right, bye-bye. Could I have a word, please, Hillary? Yes, you are feeling all right now. Fine, thanks. A few questions about Jimmy. Uh, the case is closed. Don't you think you're being a little hard on him? He stole Chesco. He abused the trust I placed in him and stole from me. Like Jason. Now, that is entirely different. Is he? Did you or did you not forgive your son? Yes. And I'm not forgiving Jimmy, all right? <laughs> and that's your last word on the subject? No, my last word on the subject is out. Out, out, get out, out, out. Get out. What are you listening what? to? What? I said, what are you listening to? Oh, brilliant stuff. This skeleton. You heard of them? What are they? Thrash metal? Uh, last year's thing. This is death metal. Copper nearful. Oh, not bad, not bad. Uh, not what you call subtle, though, is it? Subtle's for wrinkles. This is energy. Drives old pimple top mental. Mm, rough at home, is it? Ball ring. He tries to run it like he does this place. Me mum's all right, though, into shag pile carpets and having her hair perm three times a week. Now, I can usually get me own way with her, though. Yeah, my mum's OK, too. Yeah, what about your dad? Oh, well, never knew my dad. He died when I was little. Uh, you're welcome to mine if you want. No, thanks. Uh, worth a try. <laughs> what about school? How did you get on there? That's boring, too. Computer studies are all right. I do a bit of hacking and stuff. But really? What? You can get into any computer? Yeah. I have the power of pink skull. Uh, well, that could be very useful. Well, if you want anything done, just ask. Mm. Hey, I bet be getting back to Chrome, though, no? Uh, before he flips his wig. Sorry? His wig. Ah, yes, wig does. Very good. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> very good, very good, yeah. Now I'm afraid Dr. Crispin Hopwood isn't in today. <sighs> a worry work dad goes into the studio on Monday. Ah. Uh, oh, I see. You must be one of our shoe enthusiasts for this week's show. No, as a matter of fact, I don't wear blue suede Wellingtons very often. It's old furry top in his office. No, he's in the boutique. Oh, cheers. <sighs> yes, we have a wide range of shoe cleaning facilities available at the motel. Mm. So, what do you think of the place? It's great. Really ace. Really? Yeah, this is the business. Yeah, there's no business like it, apart from show business, of course. <laughs> so, you don't mind spending the weekend here? Mind? I'm having a terrific time. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm seriously considering and following in your footsteps. Well, you mean taking it up as a career? Really? Well, look what it's done for you. Not again, Jimmy. It's no good for me. I'm too young for an ulcer. Oh, take it easy, Chesco. Oh, sure. I've always wanted to play secret agent, breaking into Hillary's office, really. I've cracked it. How'd you crack a plant? Oh, don't be a complete dipstick. Oh, you've cracked the pot. Chesco, I was rooting around his office and I found out where the money went. Where? Ah. Shh, shh. Hello? Hello? Who's your lady friend? Jason Rolls to the car park, please. Jason Rolls to the car park. Thank you. Uh, now, sir, your room. Um, is smoking on on? What? It's on. Oh! Big Daddy's watching you. Give me the moonlight, give me the girl, and leave the rest to me. Oh. Sorry I'm late, Dad. I got caught up talking to Luigi, the chef. Yeah. Oh, what do you think he meant by, uh, Take it, you hike. Your son of a bull, but none. Yeah, don't worry about him. He's from Sicily. Fair and now these leaves are getting a bit much. You want them sweat? Yes. Just leaf it to me. Leaf it to me. Sorry? You could say I've turned over a new leaf. Oh, leaf jokes. Yes, that's very good. Well, jump to it. <laughs> Your wish is my commando, master. Could you spare a moment, please, Hillary? Right away, Chesco. Could you spare a moment, please, Hillary? Yeah. yeah. Turning over a new leaf. <laughs> that's very... Yeah. Now then, Chesco, what's up? It's the opposite of Dan, but that's not important right now. Could you step into your office, please? Why? What's going on? Someone wants a word with you. Mm. What's he doing here? What, what, he came with You've you, got a nerve. I thought you were in enough trouble already, young man. But I'm innocent. Get out of my office. I think you should hear what he has to say. Get out of my office. I think you should hear what he has to now, say. Now, don't you start again, or I'll sack you, too. At least just look at this. It's a check, sir. Hmm, for a hundred pounds? Well? A bit of a coincidence, isn't it? What are you driving at? What was the check for? It was from one of the guests. He was short of cash. And... 
Oh, good grief. I see what you're driving at. The check should have gone into the box to replace the cash. Exactly. The dosh was never missing. Thing. You obviously cast a check for some punter and forgot you'd done it. it. Basic accounting, Hillary. Hillary. Jimmy, I think I owe you an apology. apology. Mm. Mm. To put it mildly. But what about my job? Yeah, it's yours. I mean, you can have your job back. Oh, thank goodness you found the check. Where did you find the check? I, uh... Well, where did I find it, Chesco? It just came to hand. Well, I'm very relieved that it did. Oh, no. What? How am I going to break the news to Jason? He's rather taken to the work. I expect he'll cope. Oh, he's a sensitive lad. Mm, sensitive like a water buffalo with toothache. <laughs> How's it going, son? Uh, are you fed up with hotel work yet? Oh, no, I'm loving it more and more. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You are? Uh, yes, I've got some bad news, son. Bad? I'm afraid Jimmy's back in his old job. You mean...? I'm afraid so. I decided to give him a second chance, and there isn't enough work for both of you. What a choker. I'm sorry, son. I'll tell you what, though. I'll ask around, see if I can find something in another hotel. Uh, no, thanks, Dad. It wouldn't be the same. Uh, Working for somebody else. Oh, well, that's very gratifying. It's very heartwarming. I'm gutted, but there you go. Well, I'll have a word with your mother, see if we can't find some way of making it up to you. Cheers, Dad. You're a real mate. Yeah. Cheers, Chesco. I couldn't have done it without you. What are friends for? Not that I had a lot of choice. You loved every minute of it. I'm just pleased to get everything back to normal. Yeah, I can't wait to see Lucy's face when she sees me back. Jimmy, a toast. The quiet life. Yeah, no more troubles. about to give away one of the top ten games in the country, the Neighbours game. Apparently, Claire Benfield from Hastings has got the fastest finger in the land. <laughs> she was the first to dial through with the correct answer, I think. Claire, are you there? Yes. Right then, what is the street that Neighbours is set in, Claire? Ramsey Street. 